to another episode of the GBK Boys. I'm Nick A. Teff. And I'm Ryan Kazera. Tops made headlines this week with Garbage Bell Kids because of their online Shammy Award set. The Shammy Award set parodies the 63rd annual Grammys. In that set, there is a controversial image of the famous South Korean group BTS in a whack-a-mole style game, battered and bruised, being beaten by the Grammy Award. We are going to actually get more into that at the GPK Talk, but it is an important note for you guys to know. One of the things I wanted to highlight in news was this box right here, which I had just received. Uh, OS 16. If you guys know anything about OS 16, it was scheduled to be released by Tops in 1989. Made it to the presses, but never made it into your hands. Some of the reasons why were when they took a look at the logistics overall on what it would cost them to produce this, as opposed to the demand for this in society, it wasn't even close. So Tops knew they were going to lose money. Uh, you look at it, we're 15 sets in at this point. Garbage Pell Kids and the lore of it is starting to really kind of disappear. And again, they just didn't find that it was viable enough to go ahead to the printing presses. Now, the cool thing is, is they did throw out the prototypes. So they actually did get to the point where they started printing some of the cards. They had thrown them out and they were actually recovered by people out of the dumpster. So they are all in black and white because they never did get to the point where they, they were colored. So what happened with this is just like anything else, if we can't get it from the source, the fans are going to take over. And that's exactly what happened here with the 16th series. So again, this is a fan-made series, not tops, craps on the back. Um, these were limited to 200 boxes. So if you didn't get in, it's going to be kind of tough at this point. They are floating around eBay for upwards of $500 plus. Um, but, you know, for me personally, to be able to have the 16th anniversary, which a lot with a lot of the original images and cards that were set to be produced, is just something that we might not have, ever even see again. The fans have asked Topps forever to produce something like this, and they just never got there. The cool thing is, is Topps did take those images and throughout time in different brand new series sets and everything else, they actually did end up putting out every single one of the cards that was set to be produced in here. We got a chance to talk to the man behind the scenes that created this 16th series. Just kind of ask him a few questions. You know, the biggest thing was, why did we make these? You know, what was kind of the thought behind this? Um, the source had told me that they had actually worked on this for over five months and they really put a lot of detail into this set. They figured if they were going to go through and do the time of the production, they really wanted to get it right. You know, and it, it kind of brings to the question, is this a ripoff set? Is this a bootleg set? It all is going to come down to personal preference. For me to be able to own something like this really means a lot to me to add to my overall collection. Um, when talking with the source as well, he said that there's a, enough discernible differences in the cards within here than what was supposed to be in the original set, that this is pretty much on its own. Uh, as far as, you know, this being a bootleg set or anything else, uh, he claims that it absolutely was not. Um, the cool thing is, as well, they actually put out a promo video for it, and we'll, we'll show you a little bit of that right now. With this promo video, the end of it says, suck it tops. You know, and I asked the source, you know, what did you mean by suck it tops? What he wanted to do and, and what this group that put these together wanted to do was say, look, it, fans have been asking for this now for 32 years. You had an opportunity to put to this together and put it out. Especially with where GPK is now collection-wise, I think we have a lot more people looking for GPK and collecting GPK than ever. So, you know, do I think this would be a viable set if they actually came out with it? I think fans would go nuts for it. But again, getting back to it, the source was essentially like, you know what? You didn't do this for us. We took it in our own hands, and this is where it's at now. So, again, something very cool and nostalgic, and I'm sure you guys have seen it around on the boards. Came and went pretty quick. So, again, unfortunately, if you didn't get in, number to 200. And that's what we're looking at right now. I wanted to talk about the collective being shut down. Our family at the collective had a really bad time over the last couple weeks. Uh, somebody had posted offering some counterfeit blank ske sketch cards. And the mins quickly took that down because they realized it was counterfeit. But that wasn't fast enough for Tops to get a hold of it. Tops contacted their law team. Law team contacted Facebook to ask for the post to be taken down. Facebook took down the whole group. Luckily, the collective got in touch with Tops. Tops then contact their, their law team. And the law team talked to Facebook, and we have our beloved page back up. Collective, admin, and family, we are so happy to have you back. Absolutely. You know, and I think if you're part of the Facebook community, as far as Garbage Pail Kids goes, you're never just in one group. You know, whether it's breaks or deal, deal or no deal or collective. 
The cool thing that I've always liked about Collective is it, it essentially is that it's a collection of anything within the GPK world. So you're not just going there if you're going to buy or sell something. You're essentially going there to figure out what is going on within the GPK world, what's coming up for releases, what people are doing as far as sketch artists, um, you know, what's new and hot within the world. So to see that back and to be able to utilize that for Garbage Pail Kids is, is a great thing for sure. Also, I wanted to know, Deal or No Deal brought up one of the coolest coins I've ever seen. It's a challenge coin. Uh, one side is deal, one side is no deal. And so if you can't figure out whether you want to accept it or not, flip the coin. By the time you watch this video, those coins have been sold out. So you can just sit there and be jealous. GPK Collection Club members, you have got your first mailing. Whether it's actually hit your mailbox or not, it will be there soon. Um, what this consists of is essentially it's called candidates. Uh, 20 cards you're looking at right here. And essentially what happened is they held an election. And the winner of that election was Nat Nerd. So you will see him as almost your first uh, club member president. So if you were actually lucky enough, unfortunately I was not because I didn't set my phone to be able to get on and, and get the membership, you will be receiving that soon. And it looks to be a pretty cool uh, little set overall. And that concludes GPK News. Hey guys, welcome back. We've got Adam Dobrzynecki here with us today, aka Ad Rock, aka Ad Fock. So we'll probably get that story from him in a little bit here. It's uh it's something pretty hilarious that, that had gone on. So Adam, how are you today, man? Good. How are you guys doing? Really good, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you joining us for sure. This, you know, you uh especially since you got into tops and you're an official artist now, um, you know, and it's it's really, really cool to see your artwork out there. And I'm sure. Um, people want to have have some questions for you and, and want to find out a little bit more about you and what makes you tick. Um, the first thing I wanted to ask you in the grand scheme of questions is, uh, tell me about where your love for GPK started. Um, <clears throat> well, the love for GPK started when I was a kid. Um, I'm too young to have like the OS1, OS2, but uh, when I was a kid, I had like OS8 uh, and up. Um, of course, like many people, I stuck them on things or and or my parents got rid of them, which sucks horribly. But uh, and then I kind of took a pause and then um, I'm a big Ghost fan, the band Ghost. So when Battle of the Bands came out, um, just that whole Phantom Forge uh, ghostly gore sticker really got me back into collecting. Um, I mean, at that point, I'd taken such a long break. I didn't know there were sketches in uh you know, in packs, uh, plates, all that good stuff. So, um, all that, all that also contributed to, uh, my love for GPK and really, uh, getting back into collecting. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, it's definitely changed since it was back in the day where, again, you pulled only cards out of there and a stick of gum and, and that was about it. The parallels have really, really changed the industry, you know, not only in GPK, but in, you know, baseball, hockey, football, people are pulling game used, you know, jerseys and everything along those lines. Um, Adam, the one thing I did want to say thank you for was you did a sketch, one of the sketches we use for our main logos. Just talk about some of the ideas that went into making that. Um, well, I really wanted to just really uh, incorporate your guys' characters into that logo. I thought that would definitely make it more more custom, uh, I guess, show who, who you guys are, what you like in the GPK community. But yeah, I mean, I just wanted to incorporate Fry and Ryan and Nick into the into the equation and uh, yeah, I liked how it turned out. Well, I got to say, it's an yeah. absolute honor to have you draw us. Um, and also, it's an honor to watch you open up all your boxes and actually an honor to see all your sketches. So I know as fans looking at you, I would love to know what your like top three GPK items that you currently own are. It's funny because two out of the three are from, I'd say, my top two favorite artists, uh, Greg Trees. Um, oh, and the other, of course, Greg? is my one of one. Oh, but I'll, uh, let me start with Greg's. Um, I have actually haven't even shared this on any pages, but it's wow. kind of a wow. sweet little sketch. I still need to get a nice holder for it. Right now, it just sits in like a uh, big plastic sleeve I have. But I was helping Greg for years put together his OS1 set. Little did I know that this guy had that much talent. And out of nowhere, like I've known, I know him well. 
But then out of nowhere, all his artwork started coming up and just like blowing my mind. His stuff is incredible. Oh, I started messaging with him just in, <clears throat> I had no clue either that he was, you know, like that kind of an artist, but he had done like a Acid Wayne bloated sketch. And the first time I saw that, actually that kind of contributed to me starting sketching again was seeing that kind of talent, what he could do. And just, it seems almost effortless with him. And same with like Lowell Isaac. It's like, I bet Lowell pumps those sketches out in 15, 20 minutes and it's freaking gold. I just can't even believe how awesome, awesomely talented those guys are. Um, here's my second piece, which everyone's seen. Uh, if you've watched any of my breaks, but it's my yeah, dead it's Ted fun. deck. Um, I love this is thing. From, is that from Greg as well? Yeah. Yeah, that's from Greg. Yeah, he does custom decks and um, he does amazing work. So, so that's uh, that's my second piece, and here's my third piece. It's my J Papa Doodle. Um, no, no idea you had that. Oh yeah, it's my guy. I, I don't think I did either. I, I really don't think I did either. You didn't pull that yourself, correct? No, no. Actually, funny story. I saw the dead Ted on eBay. Um, and I was gonna, I was gonna make an offer on it. So I send the guy an offer and it sold like three minutes after I sent the offer and it ended up being Kerr that got the, uh, the <laughs> so, so by default, I went straight to Jay who went on, uh, <clears throat> went on eBay the next day and I had to have it. So I'm really trying to rainbow the Jay now. And I guess partially rainbow Ted because Kerr said he's getting buried with Ted. So I'm gonna have everything but the Papa for Ted at some point. So actually, that's the only thing I'm missing from Ted right now is the pop. I've got the red, purple, uh, gold, orange, um, green, and turquoise. So or teal. So Adam, can you hold up the Ted again? And I just want to ask you, um, what is it like to be a sapphire addict? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a uh, it's a hard time. I mean especially when I try to keep most of my funds wrapped up in stocks right now. So I'm literally selling stuff to invest into, into Sapphire. And I really wish that I could go back in time and just buy a shit ton from tops. I guess the whole multiple order thing, I should have definitely hit, hit that, uh, taken that opportunity. I mean, right now thinking about $50 box of Sapphire is like finding a uh, leprechaun riding a unicorn I mean, it's crazy. Same with the oh, same with the twenty-five cent OS one pack. I know that's insane. Just to think back at that. Yeah, people yeah. ask me. They're like, I mean, how big is GPK right now? Because I'll tell my friends, uh, you know, how much how much I get into GPK. They're like, well, I mean, is it what's going on with it? I'm like, well, I don't know. If you had a sealed box of OS one, that's probably 30, 40 k right now, and they they don't believe it, but. Uh, yeah, it's insane where it's gone just in the past year. And I think a lot of that contributes to, uh, honestly, people quarantining and just wanting to get back into buying shit. And, um, and prices have gone through the roof. Like every single type of collectible just went over, over, the, over the lockdown. Which is good for the sports cards, guys, because for a while there, people didn't give a shit about sports cards. And now it seems like they're definitely back at it. Stimulus money has helped with that quite a bit, too, as far as people sitting there and, again, having the time to go through and actually do the research now, as opposed to before when they were working and at work all day. You know, I think people have just found themselves with a lot of free time on their hands. And, you know, all of a sudden it starts, they start to remember or you see something garbage bill kids and all of a sudden it's like, well, let me look into it let me look into it again and and see what's going on with the industry and it's just once you start going down that rabbit hole you're done adam as you know so there's no way out of it no no i'm in a i'm in a silo full of gpk goodies like scrooge mcduck swimming through that's, that's my dream right there so. <laughs> nice reference right there for sure so I, and i love the greg stuff too he's by far other than ad Fock, he is by far my favorite gpk artist and uh just what he does with the clouds and the smoke. I actually had him, I commissioned him to do a Fry and Ryan skateboard. And then I also pulled a uh, quad sketch out of a pack, which was Beetlejuice, which um, again, I'll show you guys a little bit down the road here, but just an awesome artist. And again, that's, that's so cool to hear that he inspired you to start drawing again. Yeah. And I didn't, I mean, he's an architect too, which makes a lot of sense for his creativity. Um, but yeah, he's just a great guy. I got a lot of, uh, good advice from him when I started sketching again, uh, as far as mediums and, uh, different items like that. So, 
uh, really all the GPK artists have been great as far as helping me out. Uh, Jeff Cox has given me a lot of uh, advice as far as the whole, the whole operation as being a tops artist and what's expected. And, um, <clears throat> and just being around all the, uh, all the new newbies, uh, like, uh, Nick and Andrew and Jay Boom, Robert Ball. We all, we actually had a, uh, Facebook chat going for the whole, um, while we were sketching our sketches for tops as kind of like a support group in a sense, uh, it was called the Goonies. It was very cool because, uh, you know, those guys are in the same boat you are as far as like when sketches are due advice on stuff, we'd share sketches with each other. It was a really cool, uh, cool experience is especially going through something new like that and cranking that many sketches out in that little, uh, little amount of time. So, but, uh, yeah, I mean, great community all around. Everyone knows that. Um, every once in a while you get a little bit of drama, but if you didn't, <laughs> then I don't know. I mean, that, that's not the world. There's always going to be some drama. So and actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you to just touch on that process a little bit too, as far as getting hired to do uh, the work with tops. Um, obviously you, Nick Mugley was on as well. I believe food fight was your first, uh, that you got added onto, um, but there's a lot of artists obviously within our community who are not signed on to tops that are maybe looking to submit everything to top. So if you don't mind, just talk me through that process a little bit and how that went for you. Uh, the biggest thing is consistency uh, because tops does not, they will not reply back to your emails ever. Uh, it's it's kind of frustrating, but I mean, I started out sending uh, nine to 10 sketches a month to their <clears throat> general email address, which is artist at tops.com. Um, and like I said, I didn't hear back about it, about it at all. Uh, probably took about seven or eight months. And I finally, uh, actually, Andrew Arts had told me that he got invited to uh, do Food Fight. And I said, man, that's freaking awesome. And I said, uh, well, let me check my email. So I looked at my email and sure as shit, had an invite. So um, yeah, it's just consistency because people get discouraged when they don't reply back and they stop sending art. Um, that's not the case. They're looking at it. They just, they're probably too busy to reply to everybody. Um, but yeah, just stay consistent. Um, keep practicing. Every piece you do is that much better. Um, I mean, it's science. You'll get better. And uh, <clears throat> it's honestly, uh, it's not as hard as I thought it would be to get in with tops, but definitely an honor, especially with uh, some of the great artists coming back for this set. I mean, uh, so yeah, it's a humble experience. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. And and again, especially with the guys in the group that have, have now been added to Tops, it's just so cool to see people that, you know, you interact with on a regular basis really make it in and have the chance of pulling one of their sketch cards out of out of the packs that are coming out. So that's awesome. And, and again, I'm sure everybody appreciates you going through and taking the time to kind of explain how that process worked for you. Um, the, the one thing I do want to ask above and beyond that is um, obviously Sapphire is still probably the apple of your eye right now. Are you collecting anything else? Is there anything you're looking for? Have you moved on at all to Food Fight? And then also, are you selling anything currently? Is there anything on your plate that you're looking to maybe move off or unload? Um, I'm probably going to be stuck on Sapphire until there's no boxes left, to be honest, or until I get my my last two uh, that I need for my double rainbow. Um, I just started opening Food Fight. I kind of have a, my basement is my GPK layer, and there are still chrome and 35th cards like everywhere that needs sorted so it's to the point where i need to get everything sorted so that i can move on to other things i did start cracking some uh food fight last night i got some uh autos so i've got a uh, food fight to crack i just i'm running out of room i got to get everything boxed up and sorted you haven't pulled your own sketch have you no that would be crazy yeah i know i was thinking about it. i actually bought one of my sketches back yesterday on uh marketplace it was a queen uh battle of the band sketch and i absolutely love that sketch when i was doing it and um it was a really good price so i bought it back the guy was like i'm just curious why an artist would want to buy their own card back um i just that card was my favorite to do so i snagged that sucker up at a pretty good price <laughs> i love that i love that that's yeah that's that's too funny that's that's good stuff the way it all comes full circle um Adam, I wanted to ask you as well. So in your collection right now, what is the one item that you don't have that you're looking for? Obviously, it would be probably the the dead Ted Papadopoulos. Um, but if money was no issue, what would be the one thing that you would want to own in your collection? Um, 
that's a hard question. I would honestly say um, probably right now a dead Ted uh, super would be my number one item for sure. I don't even know if one's been pulled. I don't believe it has been pulled yet. It's still out there, but uh, yeah, that would, uh, that would be my, my number one item right now. I think that would be through the roof as far as prices go right now from what I've seen. Um, obviously PSA shit is through the roof. It's insane. But, uh, yeah, I think if money wasn't an option, I, that Ted super would probably go for five to five to 10 right now, I would guess. Yeah. So I, I would snag that stuff in a heartbeat. And I'm obviously looking for a purple J decay and red J decay sapphire will complete my double rainbow minus the, uh, the Papadopoulos that Durs, that, uh, Kerr is taken to the grave. So, uh, so yeah, if anyone watching this happens to have either of those cards, I know a J went on eBay for 199 bucks last week. Uh, I was really busy at work, didn't see it because I watched that shit like a hawk. And I my I felt like I was going to throw up because 199 for a purple J is like wow. So, but yeah, those are uh, three cards that I need desperately. So. Good stuff. Well, Adam, can't thank you enough for your time today. And if you guys are on uh, GPK Breaks, that board at all, there's two things that are constant at about three in the morning. And it's Adam probably on doing a break at some point in time and an infomercial for Shake Weights on your favorite channel. So, again, can't thank you enough today for that, bud. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, again, everybody's going to or is excited to be able to hear from you and, and how you started collecting and what's going on with your relationship with Tops. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Uh, this is a great idea there's nothing like this right now so it's going to be really cool uh moving forward seeing what you guys come up with on a weekly basis who you have on the show uh definitely an awesome uh, idea i think it should be uh should blow up pretty good tops made headlines after releasing an image from their online chamois award set parody set that's parodies the 63rd annual Grammy Awards. In the set, there's an Asian Korean group called BTS. And in that set, there is a depiction of BTS in a whack-a-mole style game, battered and bruised, being beaten by a Grammy. That image is supposed to signify the fact that they got snubbed at the Grammys and they got none of them. Now, you need to understand the magnitude of BTS. BTS, for example, was uh, the most viewed YouTube video in 24 hours. Number two, there was the fastest group to hit 1 million viewers on TikTok. And even bigger than that, they actually contribute to 0.3% of the GDP of South Korea, which means that they contributed $4.65 billion to the country's economy. The terrible timing for this card came at the same time where Asian hate crimes have risen by 150% in America, and even small places like Vancouver, Canada have seen a spike of Asian hate crimes by 700%. Tops did release a statement, and it goes a little something like this. We hear and understand our consumers who are upset about the portrayal of BTS and our GPK Shammy Awards product, and we apologize for including it. We have removed the BTS sticker card from the set, and we have not printed any of the stickers, and, we'll no, and none of them will be available. That's their official statement on the sticker. What do you guys think? Well, for me, you know, looking at this, the timing couldn't be more poor. Um, but even taking a step back from that, not even looking at the timing and some of the things that have happened, especially in the United States as far as Asian hate crimes go, I just don't understand. First of all, I think the card is is just lacking any true art, art form whatsoever. It's just not a good card across the board. Um, but when you look at it, whether the timing was good or not, um, I just think that there was really no thought put into the fact that, you know, we're depicting an, an Asian group here that's being beaten. It's, you know, kind of like we had talked about before, Nick. It's the only card that depicts anything like that. And above and beyond that, I just can't believe that, you know, somebody wasn't sitting in a boardroom somewhere going, yeah, this probably isn't the best idea we've ever had. I just, again, all the way around, I, I think that the card is is lackluster. And, you know, for them to choose to use it on this card in that manner was just a, a really bad choice. You know, the point where if you ever have to come back and apologize for something you did like that, I'm just wondering where the quality was uh, control was to begin with. Uh, yeah, you know, you used a, a good word. It's absolutely tasteless. Like, I don't believe that the artist actually sought out to be the R word. 
um, in, in this, but I think that the fact that nobody took into account what's going on in the world is, it, I mean, just shame on them. Uh, you have to, you, when you're parodying anything and you're using comedy for anything, you have to be sensitive. Sometimes comedy walks a fine line and, I, and that's actually the brilliance of comedy. But in this case, this was just gross and I really want nothing to do with this card. Before the controversy broke, I noticed an article on Billboard. It was something like, you can now owe Grammy-themed Garbage Pail Kids. And to me, I thought, oh, wow, Top did a press release here, you know, to promote the set, to kind of cast the net to a wider audience. And these sets are on demand. So for Tops, it's like printing money, right? So the wider the audience, the more sales. Well, that backfired. And I agree with you guys. There's nothing good about this card. It sucks. And honestly, as a fan of GPK and someone who gives their hard-earned money to Tops, I'd rather see them focus on making quality cards that collectors want to collect. I'd rather Tops focus on quality versus quantity. Hey, and listen, what makes up GPKs? Being gross, being violent, being slightly offensive, that is the makeup that makes us love these cards. But Tops took that formula and created something that really stinks and doesn't actually represent these cards that we actually love. Well, that covers that one. <laughs> Ryan, you had some shout outs, right? I did have some shout outs. Uh, a couple things going on. Cool that I just wanted to, to say thank you and, and, and kind of highlight. Carrie Zock is doing this thing where she's going through and taking pictures of her dad opening Garbage Pail Kids cards. And I just think that's super awesome. Uh, again, we had talked about it earlier on, just sharing the love of Garbage Pail Kids overall with anybody else who's in your life. And it's just the smile on his face as he's opening cards and displaying them. It's just something really cool to see. I um, want to thank Bob Slidell, who, uh, who helped me out quite a bit the other day trying to complete my Sapphire set. Just another thing that goes to show you again, you know, GBK World is just such a tight-knit community. You know, people not even asking for money or cards in return to help people to be able to, to create and finish some of these sets. Uh, last thing, Steve Sodergren, I just want to say thank you. He uh, did a personal favor for me and really, really an awesome guy. So, um, you know, and with all these thank yous and shout outs, obviously, thank you guys for tuning in as always. Ryan, you're number one. Mike. Ponovich, you're the magic man. I really appreciate you. And guys, this was episode two. On to the next one.